In most countries, the citizens know who they're at war with. But here in the United States, it's sometimes a little difficult to keep track of who we're bombing at any given moment. Do you know how many countries the U.S. is currently bombing? I have no idea. <laughs> no. Uh, a few. Forty in between fifty. I think one or two. I don't know. <laughs> My favorite color is purple. <laughs> In fact, we're currently bombing seven different countries. Now, let's start with the easy one. If you've been watching the presidential debates, you know that ISIS is a major concern to our candidates. ISIS. 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 You brag that you have sexually assaulted women. ISIS. ISIS is located in Iraq and Syria, so we're dropping bombs on both those countries. Syria is a real humanitarian catastrophe, where literally half of the country's 22 million people have been either killed or displaced. The Syrian war is a complicated clusterfuck, with at least four different factions fighting each other. Our goals there are to knock out ISIS, but also to knock out the Syrian dictator Bashar al-Assad, but they're fighting each other, so sometimes it's a little difficult to know who's bombing whom. The fact that we're bombing Iraq should come as no surprise. As The Onion points out, we've been bombing them off and on for about 25 years now. The other country that shouldn't come as too much of a surprise is Afghanistan. We invaded them way back in 2001 in response to the 9-11 attacks. We've been fighting there for 15 years now, and there's no end in sight. It is officially the longest war in American history. And as part of our war in Afghanistan, we're also bombing Pakistan. That's because sometimes the Taliban and Al-Qaeda hide out in the northern part of that country along the Afghan border. Now is where things start to get a little bit more complicated. We're also bombing a country called Yemen. Now, the war in Yemen is incredibly complex, but basically, we're conducting our own drone strikes there to target Al-Qaeda camps, but we're also supporting Saudi Arabia's larger attack on a group of rebels known as the Houthis. To be clear, the situation in Yemen is also a massive humanitarian disaster. According to the UN, 80% of the Yemeni population is in desperate need of humanitarian aid to meet even its most basic needs. There is evidence that the Saudis are deliberately targeting civilians. According to The Guardian, more than one-third of all Saudi-led air raids on Yemen have hit civilian sites, such as school buildings, hospitals, markets, mosques, and economic infrastructure. Just the other day, there was a U.S.-backed Saudi-led airstrike on a funeral that killed 140 people and wounded another 525. According to the Associated Press, in the aftermath of the strike, hundreds of body parts were found strewn in and outside the hall. Rescuers collected them in sacks. The attack turned the funeral into a lake of blood. Another country we're bombing is Libya. Now you may remember we bombed them way back in 2011 to get rid of their dictator Muammar Gaddafi. But after we got rid of Gaddafi, the country descended into chaos and ISIS was able to move in. So now we're bombing them because we don't like the replacement for the guy that we didn't like. And finally, the seventh country we're currently bombing is Somalia. Back in March, an American drone killed 150 people there. Now, immediately the Obama administration put out a statement that claimed that every one of those 150 people was a dangerous terrorist from Al-Shabaab, a group that has carried out several attacks within Somalia. No one has independently verified that all 150 people killed were in fact terrorists. The only evidence we do have is from that one statement, from the government that killed them. And that brings up another important point. Who exactly does the US government consider an enemy combatant in the endless global war on terror? The New York Times reports that the Obama administration considers all military-age males in a strike zone as combatants, unless there is explicit intelligence posthumously proving them innocent. Well, that's convenient. Any dude standing near a place where we decide to bomb is an enemy of the United States. If you really think about it, they're not wrong. So just to recap, since we launched the War on Terror after September 11, 2001, we've spent $4 trillion and 1.3 million people have been killed in our combat zones all around the world. So Syria, Iraq, Afghanistan, Pakistan, Yemen, Libya, and Somalia are the seven countries we are currently dropping bombs on. Oh, and uh, just as a reminder, the number of wars currently authorized by our Congress, zero.